Biff and I have known each other by going to the same church for almost 25 years. I'd say longer. Uh, well, I've only been 26, so. Oh, you've only been in town that long? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so, but it was about about 25 years. Um, and then we had a gap um, where I went to a different church. He's going a different one now, I think. But um, anyway, we kind of found each other again five years ago, mm -hmm. plus uh, well, maybe a little less or more, I'd say a more. Um, related to the Lexington Rescue Mission on the board of directors. And um, known of him, he's a successful businessman, has Buckley and company insurance and property investments and stuff. But he's a really good Christian guy. And um, I don't know if, I was trying to think of something halfway clever to say. I don't know if your wife Elizabeth <laughs> knows the same Biff that I know. My wife Lynn would say I am not the same man at home that I am anywhere else. Let's hope. <laughs> I'm, much worse, I'm much worse at home. Oh, you're much worse. That's what she would say. I'm much worse at home. But anyway, Biff, Biff is a great guy, um, in, in my opinion. And so when we were talking about something to do um, and options, I thought of him. He, he knows, has known Jeremy for quite a while. Um, and so the other thing I can say about Biff is based on that I'm his friend and Jeremy's his friend that may not be speaking so highly of him but uh, <laughs> other things I've two seen two strike I, principle yeah, there yeah, you're saying yeah, you can be friends with us if you want to raise the bar a little bit on your <laughs> yeah, yeah that would definitely <laughs> raise the bar if you kind of expand out against some of these guys so he's going to share with us in kind of a, a very informal style can you throw in a footnote real quick? Sure, and while you're doing that, do we have a uh, marker? There's one right behind you. There you go. Oh, good, out. good. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, and in addition to all the other fun things Biff does, he has a suit of armor and uh, rides a motorcycle <laughs> all across the country. <laughs> That's a Are you still picture. riding after that accident? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. That's why he has a suit of armor. So they, uh, I, 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 I see they go together. They go very well. They go together. Separate ice. Are you a Goldwing guy or a Harley guy? Uh, BMW. A BMW guy. Touring. Touring mm -hmm. bike. Um, well, thank you all for those kind words. Um, Steve asked me to share maybe a little bit about uh, <clears throat> how to balance competing priorities in our life. Uh, you know, the home, the church, the job, hobbies, children. How do you, how do you balance all of those? And I, I just started meditating on that and asking the Lord to help me come up with something that might be meaningful. <clears throat> and so, actually... Here's what I came up with. I, I kind of, and I'm, I'm going to get back to that toward the end about balancing priorities. We really will get there, I assure you. But um, <clears throat> I'm going to put that at the bottom here, or uh, we'll just, uh, I'll just use the word balance. I'm going to put that at the bottom. The process of my thinking was when you talk about balance in your life. Then you have to ask the question, okay, what should the priorities be in our lives? Okay? So you can't answer balance until you say, okay, well, what are what ought to be the <clears throat> priorities in our in our life as Christians, as believers? <clears throat> you can't talk about balance without talking about priorities. Well, all right, so you think about well, priorities, well, how how can you list priorities? Priorities depend upon what is our, our calling, uh, or I'll say, I, I kind of like the word, our assignment from God. All right? So you can't talk about priorities until you talk about, well, what, what are we supposed to be doing? What's God called us to do? <clears throat> and then, well, then you can't, but you can't talk about calling or uh, assignment without talking about what is the purpose? What is the purpose of life? 
So if you figure this, figure out the purpose of life, then you can start talking about, well, how do you fit in and your calling, your assignment? And then from that, you can go to prioritizing things. And from that, you can have a great discussion about how to balance everything in your life. Does that make sense? Anybody want to comment just on that, on that process, first of all? It's so really good. so yeah. you just asked me about this and I end up <laughs> I end up back up here because I'm kind of a logical thinker and I uh, and, and in talking a little bit about purpose in life there's some phrases you all have probably heard before that I'm just going to kind of throw out there uh, and, and as to why it's important to talk about purpose uh, <clears throat> um, there's a scripture that more or less says, as our days are, so shall our lives be. In other words, as we order our days, that will do, that the end result of that, <clears throat> at the end of our life, that's how our life will be. So we always have a tendency to live, or I do, I think many of us do, in the future. We, we, we tend to think, well, I, we tend to think, uh, I'll, I'll figure this stuff out later. Right now, I've got to get the baby to bed and I've got to get my thoughts together for what I'm doing tomorrow and I've got to spend some time with my wife. And you tend to put off thinking longer term. But as our days are, so shall... I mean, our lives are no more than the sum of our individual days. Okay? So it's important. It's, I think it's massively important how we live our lives, which gets down to all of this stuff, and it gets down to what we choose to do every day. Uh, <clears throat> another um, another phrase that's similar uh, comes out of Psalm 90. Uh, Teach us to order our days so that we may get a heart of wisdom. So the psalmist is saying, teach us to order our days so that we may get a heart of wisdom. I mean, wisdom is, wow, that's something we all should be seeking. And I, I suppose I've probably never prayed any prayer more than God give me wisdom. God give me wisdom in general. God give me wisdom for this, for that. That's, that's, that's one of those constant prayers that I breathe. <clears throat> uh, fit, fit, fitting in with all of this is the whole concept of finishing well. Finishing strong. Uh, you guys, uh, mixed ages here, but I'll tell you what, if you're 20 now, you're going to turn around tomorrow and you're going to be 40. I mean, it's going to happen that fast. If you're 40 now, you're going to turn around tomorrow and you're going to be 62. That's me. I know, I know it's going to be a blink of an eye, and if God grants it, I'll be 80. I mean, it's just... Incredible how quick time <clears throat> passes. Incredible. Uh, and it's important, I believe, that we finish strong, that we finish well the, the race that God has set before us. Uh, <clears throat> and one interesting thing for those in middle age or beyond, it's never too late to get it right. Mm -hmm. You know, it doesn't, I mean, some people get discouraged and say, why bother? I messed up so bad, it's never too late to get it right. God wants you to get it right. Um, uh, God wants you to figure all this out, and He'll help you. That's why He's given us the Holy Spirit. Um, okay, um, <clears throat> so when you, when you start out with asking this question, the purpose of life. Uh, what? I'm, I, give me some feedback. What do you all think? What? What? I'm going to give you my answer, <clears throat> but I I uh, uh, I want to hear yours. So, what is the purpose of life? As a Christian, how would you answer that question? To love, love people. Love people. Good answer. <clears throat> what else? Great commandment. 
Pardon? Great commandment. Great commandment, which is? Love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, and soul, and love your neighbor as yourself. That's the first and second. First commandment. And, uh, <clears throat> and love, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Um, we'll come back to that. Good, Jeremy. What, what else? Anybody else want to add something as far as what you think the purpose, the big picture, the biggest picture, not, you know, not um, the, the minor stuff, but the biggest picture. What, what is the purpose of life as a believer? What is the purpose? Well, using just what you've got there, I think the purpose is, <clears throat> our pur a satisfying purpose is to discover the calling and assignment mm -hmm. and to complete it. Mm -hmm. and you use the priorities and the balance to do that. Mm -hmm. Very That's good. Kind of yeah, discovering, discovering this, discovering what, why we're here. It's a good answer. Anybody else want to weigh in? I think the generic biblical one is to bring God glory. And then, I mean, that's pretty abstract, so uh -huh. I think the other one, it's easier to look at like loving God, loving people. That, those are more verb right. things. So you can't bring God glory unless you're doing those other things as well. Bringing God glory. Love it. Love it. Uh, okay. Um, I think <clears throat> if, if I'm answering my own question, and I realize there's plenty of room for debate on this, I would tend toward Jeremy's answer, and it's not just because he's got the video camera. Fair. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm bidding you on too, Biff. So. Oh, okay, Don. I liked your answer too, but you didn't say anything. Yeah. <laughs> All right. You want it now? <laughs> yeah. Go ahead. Um, I always say serve. Serve. Yeah. Wait. Jesus. Uh, Jesus said that he came to serve and not be served. Yes. I said witness. Witness. Sharing. Yeah. <clears throat> That's part of the second commandment, which is loving people, is uh, to share everything we've got, our faith, our resources. So sharing is, is important. But <clears throat> let's, uh, since I've got the pen here, we'll, let's talk about the first commandment. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. I just think that is massively important. And it's in the New Testament. It's in the Old Testament. <clears throat> really, the, the first two, the great commandments, love the Lord your God and, and love others, sum up all of the law and the prophets. Old Testament, New Testament. Now, if we get the first commandment right, loving God with, with all of our being, then the second commandment takes care of itself. Because we do the second commandment, loving others, out of the overflow of the first commandment. You've got to have the first commandment first. And I think churches that get the second commandment first, some churches do. You know, serving other people, they get that first and there tends to be a burnout effect. But if you get the first commandment first, where we are in love with Jesus, and <clears throat> we can talk about some, maybe another time, what does that mean? How do you do the first commandment? That's a whole other subject more than we got time for tonight. But, but anyway, the, the whole idea of loving God and and working that out in our daily lives in, in all of these areas. But if we get that right, everything else falls into place. And if we get that wrong, we got problems. That's a real simple way of looking at it, but I believe it's accurate. I believe the first commandment is that important. Okay, so I believe our purpose <clears throat> is, is, to, is, to, is to have that relationship with God, to be in love with God, and, and, and out of that, everything else will, will fall into place. Okay, so we get our purpose right. And then the, the next thing is uh, 
our calling, uh, our, our assignment <clears throat> in, the, in this life from God, our calling, our assignment. Now, uh, <clears throat> I'm speaking, when I'm asked, when I'm saying that, I'm really not so much talking about our job. Uh, our uh, that which we're compensated for. Okay, I'm not so much talking about that. Let me give you an example. In myself, I know that my calling, my assignment, <clears throat> is is I'm called. I'm called to the marketplace. I'm not. I'm not so much called to the church. I'm called to represent Christ in the marketplace, <clears throat> and I. Uh, and um, and I'm called to work with men. I just that's just who God's made me to be. And so I do a lot of one-on-one -on -one stuff. Jeremy and I have met quite a bit over the years, one-on-one uh, -on -one in, in small groups like this. Um, <clears throat> got a Bible study every Monday at noon in my office in the marketplace. Uh, so. Things like that are just, that's my assignment. That's my calling. That's, that's, that's who I am. That's who He's made me to be. And uh, now secondarily, uh, you know, I, I'm in the insurance business. I'm in the real estate business. Da-da-da-da-da-da-da. But, but that's really secondary. When God evaluates my life, He's going to evaluate, how did you do here, Biff? He's not going to say, did you sell an extra insurance policy? You know, He's going to say, how did you do here? This is what I gave you to do. This is, this is your assignment. This is your call. How would you do here? And so many, many men don't really know what their assignment is. <clears throat> and I would say some of you may know, some of you may not know, some of you may be somewhere in between where you've got some inkling. But God does not desire to keep that a secret from you if you don't know that. Mm -hmm. And so if you'll seek Him and say, Lord, why am I here? What's my calling? What's my assignment? What am I supposed to do here? He'll, he will give you that. Maybe immediately. Maybe over a period of years. It may be that you can go to a trusted advisor like Don or somebody else and say, hey, what do you see in me? What, do you, what gifts do you see in me? And uh, and you can walk along. You can walk beside a brother and help discover what your calling is, what your assignment is. Okay. So before we leave that, I'd love your all's questions, comments on on that. Your experience. Is that something you feel like can shift throughout seasons of your life, or is it always? I, I think it can shift. It's a great question. I think it can shift. I think for me, it's never shifted. Now it took me a, a little while to figure it out. A few years. I became a Christian at age 22, and by my late 20s, I pretty much figured it out. Um, and I don't. I'll be surprised if it changes. Now there may be some components that are added to it, some new wrinkles and different expressions of it. Uh, but um, but I think I think it can change. God's God's God, and so I think it can change. Certainly, the vocation, the vocational aspect, which we're not really talking about, can. You know, can change. <clears throat> Jeremy? No, I was just going to say just a conversation you and I had a number of years back, but that concept of vocation versus application. Mm. Such a, a powerful concept. I mean, that would be a great one for even an, an evening, you know, conversation about that or if you're covering it in priorities. But just that, that differentiation, I know for me, that element of the difference between what your calling is versus what your priorities in your family first and your vocation. Like mm -hmm. that. Yeah, we will talk about that. But that's a good point. Anybody else? Okay. Uh, <clears throat> okay, so 
so once you know your know your purpose, your calling assignment, then you can talk about priorities. And I would like I I, I would like I have a sheet of paper and I want to give a blank sheet of paper to everybody. But you will need a pen or a pencil. And I want to do a little exercise together. <coughs> take, just take, tear off one sheet and pass it around. What? <laughs> we'll never make it. No, we'll make it. Promise you. Yeah. All right. I said we have to be out here I said. This is bedtime. Okay. Um, all right. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to list alphabetically six priorities. I've, I've lumped all of life into six categories, and maybe there are more. Maybe, or maybe there's you know, one that can be subdivided and all that. So just bear with me. And I'm going to list these alphabetically first, okay? Uh, I'm just going to list children. I'm going to list church. Again, alphabetical. I'm going to list hobbies. I'm going to list relationship with God. <clears throat> I'm going to list vocation, <laughs> our job. And then I'm going to list the last one, is I'm going to list wife slash marriage. Now, this is alphabetical. Now what I want you to do is I want you to put a put a line down the middle of the paper uh, vertically and I want you to put the first column I want you to label what should be our priorities and I want you to, the second column would be what are or what is what is my let's say what is my no I'm sorry what are my priorities what are my priorities <coughs> now <clears throat> what I want you to do is uh, what should be your priority I want you to list number one Number two, number three, you got you got six choices here. You got to prioritize what you think should be number one, what you think should be number two, all the way down to what you think should be the least important priority. And then in the next column, I want you to put number them differently. I want you to do it what actually are your priorities in your life. What should be from, let's just say, from God's perspective, from a biblical perspective, the next column is what, what, what are they for you in reality? First column is easy, the second column is harder.
right, we'll go ahead and if you're still writing, finish up, and we'll we'll go ahead and just start talking about it. And let's focus on the left hand column first, what should be our priorities as you understand God, as you understand the scriptures, what should be our our priorities if you had to divide it up between these six. Uh, of course, I've already given away what I think it should be. You don't know, know what I think, but but let me hear you all. What, what did you put as number one? Different different ones of you. Steve? Relationship with God. That's what should be. Okay. Steve, put this one as, as first. All right. Who else? Can't do the same. Same? I put the church. <laughs> you put the church first. Okay, we'll come back to that. Jeremy? Relationship with God. Okay, all right. The reason I think, uh, Ted, that, that that's the right answer is because uh, uh, it all starts with the... Uh, I guess if you come, perhaps, perhaps if you come from a, a Catholic background, uh, I could see that. Uh, but that for those that come living. from a Protestant background that emphasizes the individual priesthood of the believer, meaning that we're all called to be priests, and we're all called to have this direct relationship with God, and, and then out of that flows our church life. Uh, the, church by, the church exists to feed our, our uh, relationship with God, to encourage it, to feed it. The church exists for that purpose. Uh, but the church by itself can't get you there. It can't get you saved. That's, you know, it has to... Our relationship with God depends on our, us as individuals responding to Him. In other words, I'm not saved. You're not saved because you go to this church. You're saved because you have a relationship with God and Jesus has forgiven your sins. So that's, that's uh, while I appreciate your answer, that's why I, would, I, I personally would, would, would say that relationship with God ought to be number one. Okay, what did you have for number two? Anybody? Wife and marriage. Wife and marriage. Okay. And this. Who else? Had, who else had something different? Maybe? Had a fair share of God. <laughs> you had a relationship with God? Okay. All right. That's good. Chris? I, I really put, I think I had a tie. I've swapped them back and forth several times between church and wife. Okay. I, I don't. Okay. Good answer. I, I, I'll come back to it. Anybody else want to wait in? Is everybody is is everybody else comfortable with with wife wife and marriage as number two? I, I, that's the way I put it. And um, you know, Genesis makes it clear God called the two to become one. And my relationship with my now, now, I'll give you a little disclaimer here that Steve's aware of. I've been married twice. I tell people I've had the worst marriage in the world and I've had the best marriage in the world. And I'm sure neither of those statements are exactly true, but that feels that way to me. <laughs> and, uh, you know, so I know how to do marriage wrong. And I know something about doing marriage right. And I can tell you, life ain't no fun doing marriage wrong. And, and, and your your relationship with God will suffer if you do if you do if you do it wrong. Uh, I just feel like it is so critical uh, that we do everything we can to nurture that relationship with our spouse, and uh, because we're, God's called us to be one, and if He's called us to be one, and there's that friction there that's always there, then it will disrupt what what should be number one. It's very hard not to be on, it's very hard to do this well and this poorly. If you do this poorly, it will bleed over and affect this. You can pull all kinds of scriptures out to prove it or you can just believe me because I've lived it. 
Uh, are any, any more questions or comments on the second priority? All right. What what did you what do you think about number three? What what's the third priority here? Children. I think the wife. <laughs> you got the wife, yeah. <laughs> Not my okay. kids. Yeah. Right, right. Children. You put children. All right. Same. Same. Mm -hmm. Same. How about you two? Put children. So, all right. Uh, I I would agree. I would agree. I would agree that that uh, children are three, and it and I put children before church just for the same reason that I put wife here. I I think at the end of life when I meet the Lord and that day of accountability comes, I think He's going to be far more interested in how I treated my wife and my kids than my service to the church. And in saying that, I'm a big time churchman. <laughs> I believe in the church. I'm faithful to my church. I, you know, I just, the church is the body of Christ. That's where our, li our, our life comes through the church. Our, we, the body of Christ is so important. Uh, Christianity should never be lived outside of the context of community. So I believe in church. But uh, I, think, I think God holds us to a higher standard with regard to our wife and our children than He does to our church. So that's where I'm coming from. Uh, all right. Anybody want to comment on, ch on children and your experience, your... Jeremy. No, I was just going to say, well, two things. One, the old folk proverb on uh, why to put two before three. The old saying, if mama ain't happy, ain't nobody happy, right. is definitely right. there. But you look at the people who got chastised badly in the Bible. You look at Eli right. for allowing his children, like he was doing all of these things. He was busy doing things. Mm -hmm. Yet his children were essentially running them up and giving God a name. And then Paul, who says that you're worse than heathens if you mm -hmm. if you allow these things to slide. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I uh, said him and my son, but I, I wouldn't have seen this 20 years ago, like I see it now, as to the the spiritual uh, power of children. Mm -hmm. uh, we we have, uh, you know, my wife and I have been blessed with three wonderful children who are strong believers and their mates are strong believers. Mm -hmm. It's a powerful force. Mm -hmm. It is. And uh, it's mm -hmm. it's akin to the church in many ways. It's it's a you know, especially here at the gathering, as you know, there are a lot of Anzians. <laughs> but 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 really I never would have seen that twenty years ago or even thought of that. Of because family can be almost kind of a selfish, self serving thing too. It can be. And and I think I was approaching it more along the lines of duty, and also I love my children; they love me. I get something back out of this. Mm -hmm. But but now looking at it, it's it's like, wow, God was doing something all those years that I didn't even think about was possible or was part of the package. Mm -hmm. Yeah, That's and that that really raises children up pretty high, yeah. you know, uh, since we put it put them above the church. All right. Anybody else on children? Okay. Now I confess, between my number four and number five, I struggled, and so I'm not I'm not going to present um, present it as if I know the right exactly how to do four and five. But I would again be very interested in what you all had. Um, let's start with number four. What did you have as number four? Church. Okay. Any other? Anybody? Anybody else do it differently? I think hobbies. <laughs> Pardon? Hobbies. So hobbies. Mm -hmm. Okay. You had hobbies. All right. I actually had hobbies last. 
You don't play golf, do you, Biff? I, I used to. <laughs> I don't like the pictures. It's obvious he doesn't. <laughs> obvious would be a lot higher. No, yeah. I got I got these last two. Because <laughs> motorcycles we discussed. Well, yes. it's motorcycle. Yeah. Whatever your hobby is, it, it, you always will fight because it wants to yeah. creep up the list. Yeah. I go with location um, for number four, uh, head of church. Um, and I do it because it's part of my obligation or fulfillment to care for my wife and children. Right. Exactly. That's that's where I. That's why that, that I was exactly that, that was part, and it can be part of your calling. Uh, well, uh, yeah, yeah, the calling and it actually becomes the the calling um, assignment. Yeah. Uh, spiritually, your vocation can be that, or it may not be. But that's that's exactly what I so what I did on my sheet is I did I did church four or five and I did this four or five. I cheated and I just, <laughs> And you did the test. I know, I made the test up and I I didn't know how to choose. I think we all get A's. Yeah. <laughs> we, we will. Because I grade it on the curve and everybody passes. But uh I, you know, as I said before, the church is vital. Being a part of a local church, these people that say, oh, I'm, uh, I stay at home, I watch so-and-so's church on TV, and I read my Bible every day, but I, man, the church is messed up, and I just haven't found any place I feel comfortable, da-da-da-da-da-da, all the myriad of excuses, I'm tired, uh, are all excuses, as far as I'm concerned. I, I believe every believer ought to be in a part of a local body. And now it can be a home church. It can be a church that meets in an office building. It can be in a traditional church building. It can take many different forms. But you need to be a part of, lo a, 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 of a local gathering because... Uh, we need one another. Life is meant to be lived within the context of community. How am I going to mature if I don't have brothers and sisters around me to rub me the wrong way so I can see what my flesh is really like? Stretch your grace. Well, you get that at home. Yeah. Well, you get it at home, too. You get it at home, too. But you tend to dismiss it at home. And then when you tell me the same thing at church, then I begin to listen. <laughs> Lord, are you trying to say something? Jeremy's having a fit over there. Uh, so anyway, I, I just feel like church is very important, but yet vocation is important too. God's called us to excellence. He's called us to do a good job, whatever He's given us to do. We're a witness at work for Him. Uh, there's there there's so many reasons that uh, I, I think vocation and doing vocation well and with excellence is an, is a is a high priority in the Christian life. Um, um, so I, I, I kind of cheated. I didn't really try to differentiate the two. But one of the interesting things is, we, from a time perspective, you've got that which is four or five on our, our list of six, but uh, in terms of time, we spend more time here than probably anything else. And yet... And, and it becomes a, 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 an idol to us. It, it, it can. I don't mean it, it, it is automatically, but particularly in the United States, uh, we're products of the uh, Protestant work ethic and um, uh, the get ahead, pull yourself up by your bootstraps mentality, which has its virtues, but carried too far, you know, it work gets all out of kilter. And, and instead of one, two, and three, and even and, and, and even church uh, should be higher, as we can argue. So you've got to be very careful about about this. So so then that leaves at least on my list that leaves our hobbies as last. And um, but our what do you think? Our hobbies important? They're last. Why are they important? Fills her up arena. 
<laughs> Revenue for the university. Which, you know, that may be mixed up with church. Though. <laughs> yeah, with idols, yes. <laughs> with idols, definitely, Jeremy. Well, and then the, the simple fact is there is an amount of emotional well-being that comes out of our hobbies Absolutely. that allows us to stay. Like, I know with me, if I don't read books and do additional things that are not related to my vocation and some of the other things, right. and sometimes... You know, the elements come out in your hobbies that are major focuses as well. So, you know, you can have yeah. them, right? Uh, another word for hobbies is recreation. Yeah, and recreation. If you, break, if you break that down, you've got recreation. And I just know that my relationship... When I can get off and ride my motorcycle, or I can get out on the lake and fish a little bit my relationship with God is enhanced I am a better husband I am a better father I am more faithful in my church because I go I go and I'm 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 fresh I'm not going just dragging myself in there just totally exhausted but I'm fresh so uh and I I I think I do a better job because I get away from the job so I think hobbies, they're last, but hey, I think they're important. Give you balance. Yeah. I had a friend who wrote a book called Play one time. Mm. A guy here in town, mm. uh, Lauren Ross. And it, it really changed a lot of our thinking about recreation. Yeah. You know, and he would always, he was a pastor, and, and he always left time, listen guys, he always left time in his calendar for golf every week because yeah. he was a good, avid golfer. Yeah. But he knew that he was better with everything else if he right. had four hours to do what he really wanted to do. Right. So, yeah. So worked hard, but he played hard. That's right. It's They've even proven scientifically that psychologically, if you are given to play, there are varieties of play. It, it contributes to the plasticity of the mind, the ability to adapt. Yeah. And whereas if that's not present, um, you get into a, an almost inflexible state in which you can't deal with changes. Hmm. Yeah. Well, okay, so in, let me ask the next obvious question. What if, if these should be, if our priorities should be more or less in this sequence, where are yours? Do you feel like, in light of this discussion, that maybe there are any adjustments that you need to make, or do you feel like you're where you need to be? Any, and that's an optional question. You don't have to answer it, but if anybody wants to answer it, uh, for the benefit of the group, that'd be great. I'm all screwed up. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we all right Tim. Tim, you're, you're not that bad, buddy. <laughs> if you're screwed up, we're all in trouble. The, you know, I've got the first three listed as the last three on the ones I should do, and my last three on the ones that I do are the first three on the ones I should do. Uh huh. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So uh, it, it's something I've struggled with, and I've never really broken it down this way. I've just always kept it simple to you know that God should be first, and but been difficult for me to mm -hmm. and, um, not necessarily embrace that but put that into practice right. and do it right you know? I, yeah. I feel like I know because I yeah I, you know despite my dysfunctional nature here myself I feel like I've got what I know I should be doing it's just a matter of doing what I'm doing and getting that into what I should be doing mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that that's I feel I feel very reactionary instead of intentional. Mm -hmm. Like you're, you start off talking about how we just get through every day and we have to do this, we have to do that, and uh, I, I just feel like I take care of the needs that are presented to me right. as I see them during the day, right. but I don't intentionally <laughs> rearrange things right. and say no to anything. I, I'm very bad about saying no to anything. And, you know, I think as a minister, we 
as a group, we kind of have this this need to be needed. Yes. <clears throat> and uh, I, I suffer from that. If somebody wants me to ask me to do something, you guys forget this, but I, <laughs> I'm probably going to say yes. Yeah. Right. They need me. I'll right. I'll try to do that. I, right. I can rearrange this. Right. And if and you didn't so, fight against, but if you didn't fight against that, you, you, you I don't fight be, against it as much as what I should. I mean, yeah. It, well, okay, but if you didn't struggle with that, you wouldn't be a good pastor. That's the inherent weakness of almost any good pastor. Is where do you draw the line? So, it, you know, it, you need to is, ask the question, but you don't need to beat yourself up too hard because you're because you're fighting it. Yeah, that's that's the norm. Yeah. For a, for a, for a good pastor, uh, don't 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 give me too many laurel wreaths here. I mean, it's <laughs> it's it's not quite as noble as what we sometimes make it sound. Yeah. Yeah. It, I mean, just just silly things that I'll uh, I'll say, yeah, well, I can do that. I'll do that. And I can get that done, and and then I find myself, you know, six thirty, seven o'clock on Saturday night, still trying to get things ready. Sunday morning. Mm -hmm. It's like, how did I get here? Mm -hmm. Well, I look back and it's like, I just reacted to things instead of mm -hmm. really prioritizing that third things. half day of golf is what it was. That was balance. That was the one thing well, that I did golf. good. You know? yeah. Yeah. I think for me on the list, um, regardless of the order, the hardest thing there is the um, even defining the relationship with God. Yes. I mean, it's clear to me that it's not, quote, spiritual activities, like right. going to church Sunday morning. Right. That's not but, a spiritual activity. No, it is. <laughs> no, it is a spiritual but that is a, No, no. <laughs> but that is not a relationship with God. I, I'm sorry. And, that, and that's yeah. Yeah. just getting a handle on that. Right. And that's why... You know, I've got that as fifth on my list of reality. Because right. when I stop and think, yeah, I have quiet time. Uh -huh. um, you know, I'm not devoid of thinking about God, but but um, actually... But God, God waits. Whole... God doesn't demand, see? That's that's his nature. He waits. Yeah. And so he, I doesn't, think he doesn't demand that we pay attention. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I agree. He, it's, it's like, Which brings us back to you got to be intentional. Because he doesn't demand. No, it's, well, I, what I, what I would say, if you ever want to have me back, we could talk about that question. How, how do we make that number one? How do we, what, is, what would that look like to make our relationship with God number one in terms of how, what we do every day or every week or every month? What do we build into our schedules that really reflects that God is number one in our life, in our lives. I think it's a great question, and I won't try to answer it because it'll take forever. No, it won't take forever. It'll take longer than we have. But, but I would encourage each of you to just reflect on that. Hey, if if it, if if this is number one, and if we want to be intentional, which I believe as men, God God calls us. He gives us the capacity to be intentional to be leaders, to take responsibility for our lives. God gives us that capacity. Okay, so let's take that and figure out with the Holy Spirit and maybe with one another, how do we do this? How do we, how do we make God first? And uh, I'll, I'll just kind of leave it at that. Um, um, but I think it's a great thing to wrestle with. Maybe the most important thing we've said tonight that we all ought to be wrestling with. One practical thing, <clears throat> I made a note in my calendar today um, uh, to carve out, in, in 2013, I'm going to carve out a spiritual retreat quarterly. So four times every three months in 2013, I'm going to do something in the way of a spiritual retreat. Now, it may just be one day, it may be a weekend, but I'm going to get away from the everyday and I'm going to be seeking the Lord intentionally 
and cultivating that relationship with him. That's just one little thing that can be done. You know, it's, but it's far bigger than that. Okay. Anybody else want to talk about uh, what, what, what you listed uh, that really is your priorities versus what they should be? Anybody else want to talk about that? I just had a question about, I was having difficulty figuring out what metric. I think normally we go, we've said it a few times already, we normally go to time. That's how we I try to identify what priorities mm -hmm. are. But then, I mean, obviously, like sleeping would be on the list higher than other things yes. as well. So, yes. um, and then also, when I, the more I thought through it, I mean, I can give time, I can schedule in time to be with my wife. But sometimes you have more significant, you can have, you know, half an hour of a better relationship building time uh, instead of a whole day. I don't know if this makes sense or not. So sometimes time is. Quality isn't, versus quantity. Yeah. Quality. So sometimes I think uh, I fall into the trap of thinking that time is the correct evaluating tool for what the priorities are. So I think sometimes it gets messy to figure out, well, if it isn't just time, right. it's also quality. Um, you know, is it the extreme questions of if my house is burning down, I'm gonna leave my, my board games, I'm gonna grab my children, you know, but even though, you know what I'm saying? So how do you, how do you mix all that together and come out with, well, what, it, what am I practically putting first? I don't know. So, um, so even with all that mess, for me, I felt like hobbies in actuality were probably creeping higher up the list mm -hmm. than I would, would want them to. Mm -hmm. uh, and I don't know if that's just a simple sort of escapism of, you know, you can be around your kids and maybe be on the computer looking for the next uh, set of golf clubs to buy or something or on, hey, you know, hey, or whatever. Hey, hey, hey. So, <laughs> just saying. Um, so, I don't know, just finding ways that even if I'm not participating in the hobby, I'd be doing things that I'm thinking about the next time I get to do that, or I don't know if that makes sense. I can. It does. So um, I don't know. I just found that crept higher than I. Yeah. Than it probably should be. That's so. right. Good. I appreciate that. And I think that's a valuable point. That whole element of taking our thoughts captive. That concept. Mm -hmm. It's it's a mind blowing concept. I mean, at least for me as well, because you can be doing things, but your mind is so many different places. You're, you're so, and so trying to find that factor, but it, one thing I, I did like about your, your point about, you know, it's not just quantity of time, although I do think that scheduling time regularly, because mm -hmm. uh, Steve Pearson, often, uh, our old pastor, my old pastor, used to bring up the fact that you can't have quality time without having some element of quantity time. Like you can't just go, you know what, one half an hour a week, I'm gonna hang out with my kids and it's gonna be quality time, it's gonna be awesome. <laughs> You've gotta put in the time throughout the week and then sometimes it is the quality time, you just don't know that ahead of time. And the only way to get that is to basically schedule it, go, okay, I'm gonna do this. And one of the, I don't know, one of the principles for me that I, I, I work with is the concept of tithing, both tithing money but also tithing time. So I'm trying to get back into a routine after the new baby. It's been like kind of all up in the air, but trying to get to that point where, you know, the first thing I do when I wake up is I spend some time in the Word with God and talk. So it's, it's not, yeah, it, and then I'm kind of in that, in that headspace throughout the day. So even though I'm putting more hours in later in other things, it's kind of been that, that putting that, you know, there. Although in all truth, you know, right now, it's kind of flipped around and that my wife and kids are, have kind of risen above God. And I know that because they are not quietly, patiently waiting in, mm -hmm. for me to spend time. There, there, there are needs that pop up and going through and saying, okay, I need to make sure I get more sleep so that I get up earlier, so that I'm already dealing with that and then I can help my wife and I can help my kids mm -hmm. and things like that. So I guess, yeah, mm -hmm. like you, my hobby is also kind of drift when they're not supposed like trying to keep them in check but they kind of yeah especially if there are times i want to escape from <laughs> the rest of life yeah. all right well i'm basically through uh any other comments you want to make about this uh it's a new, it's a different way of going about what you asked me to talk about we didn't uh, really get to the balance of well, that's true. We we didn't get to the balance. But that's okay. Let's talk. Let's talk about, yeah. we, we, we can we can talk about. Oh, I'm not asking to go further in things. Uh, I personally like that we bring up the thing about Judaism 
In Judaism, the search for God was in the conflict, not the balance. Yeah. We in the Western society look for, hey, everything's all good, but it's the conflict in which we see God, which I think is, I had never thought of that way before. I thought it was kind of an interesting point. One of the other, um, and, and we do want to keep this, you know, we need to wrap things up here. Um, one of the other ways, if you ever come back, I'd like to have a discussion with you about this on, is I recently, I, I, I view these areas and these kind of things in a, in a covenant fashion. So it, it's not the amount of time that I spend with, with my wife, but since I'm in covenant with my wife, it's where does she want me to spend my time with her? Mm -hmm. And, you know, I've invited her to go golfing with me and she doesn't want to go. And so four hours of golf with her would not do. See, I offered that, but she didn't want it. But, but a lunch with her usually means everything to her. Mm -hmm. So you can look at each one of these things in a covenantal manner, even with vocation. Mm -hmm. And it, it does kind of, I mean, there are requirements. There are things that we have to do. Mm -hmm. Just basic requirements. And if we don't do them, um, the whole thing goes out of balance and suffers. Right. And uh, it's kind of, I always talk about kind of, you have to pay the rent first. You know, with relationships and with everybody, you have to, you have a responsibility. Mm -hmm. You have to do a certain amount of work and investment with people or anything that you're covenant with. Right. And I, I think in answer to Steve's question about balance, I, when I struggled, when I my, when I had my kids at home, which I don't anymore, but when I when I when I would struggle, it would help me to go back to this list, and and from that, I felt like the Lord would often give me the wisdom I needed to keep things in balance, um, and that's a. You don't ever underestimate the Holy Spirit's desire to give us wisdom for, for every situation in our lives, if we just ask Him. Instead, we worry instead of pray. We worry instead of pray. Or we fret over the balance instead of asking God to give us the wisdom that we need when there are competing priorities or my heart's divided. I really want to play I really want to play golf, but I know my wife needs me to hold her hand and walk around the block with her or take her to lunch or my kids need me to take them to the pool to go swimming. You know, and I that's the last thing I want to do. I want to go fishing. But my priority my children are number three. My hobbies are number six. So I'll go to the pool. And you really won't enjoy fishing. It, exactly. If you do those other things, you really won't enjoy right. the fishing. Yeah. Because your head and your heart's someplace right. else. Right. You're, you have to pay that rent, is what I would say. You right. Know, you, have, you have that responsibility to, to fulfill before you can enjoy the other thing. Right. So uh, that's that's one way to address the balance is is okay. Well, what is the priority? And I don't mean to break everything down into a formula because the Holy Spirit is a whole lot more than that. But at the same time, I think it I think it is a, an aid in figuring out how to balance competing priorities. Well, thank you guys for having me. I've enjoyed it. Got a good group of guys here, Don. Good to know you.